Good morning, everyone. I'm Kylie. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to talk about high flow oxygen therapy today. Um, first, we're going to review oxygen therapy, explain high flow oxygen therapy, and its management. Um, oxygen therapy is our first line and our first line of treatment in hypoxemic patients. Oxygen can be delivered using low flow devices such as a nasal cannula or non rebreather up to 15 liters a minute. The FiO2 varies, however, with the oxygen flow and the patient's peak inspiratory flow and the delivery system. And then conventional delivery devices also cause discomfort due to insufficient humidification. So classically, we're taught that um, a nasal cannula is a flow, low flow oxygen device and that a venturi mask is a high flow oxygen device, but with the creation of heated high flow, um, high flow nasal cannula oxygenation, all classic high, um, nasal, can, um, excuse me, oxygen devices are really low flow. This is high flow. Um, it has a gas source connected to a heated active humidifier. It delivers up to 60 liters per minute and 100% um, oxygen. So you have to remember that flow and FiO2 are independently um, titrated. As you can see here, both gentlemen are clearly have the same amount of FiO2, but way different flow rates. So those are independently um, titrated. Um, around town, you'll see a couple different devices. Um, at all the Emory campuses, we use different ones as well. There's the Vapotherm and then the Airbo systems, or fisher Pickell systems, excuse me. So high flow is, um, well, first I want to tell you a quick story. I've actually seen this work. Um, we had a 19-year-old um, VV ECMO patient that had pneumonia. Um, he was extubated the same day that we decannulated, which made me very nervous. Um, and his stats did drop right after we extubated him. And so I ran and I grabbed the high flow um, system, placed it on him. His workout breathing was a little increased. He was about a rate of 28. Um, so I started the liter flow at 60 liters a minute and I did 100%. You can't actually do 100%. I did 99 or else it will alarm um, as a safety feature for your patient. Um, so what we did was we kept a close eye on him and I was able to wean his um, FiO2 before I left. I did leave his um, flow at 60 and he was stable as night shift came on. Um, one of your first settings is temperature. You have 31, 34, and 37 degrees. You want to adjust for patient comfort, mucociliary clearance. This will prevent airway dis desiccation and the sophisticated circuits help prevent rain out. And then you can start at 37 initially and then just ask your patient, you know, is it too warm? And you can titrate it down to as low as 31. The flow ranges from 10 to 60 liters a minute. Um, there are different theories on um, how to do this because there aren't actually any um, standardized protocols right now. Um, things are being worked on. Um, but think about it. You want to set your flow rate high enough that you're going to meet the demands of the um, patient. Um, and then you want to wean based on their work of breathing. So as the work of breathing improves, then you can wean the um, flow down. The FiO2, like I said, can be 0.21 to 1. To 1. Um, the oxygen uh, dilution actually, as the flow goes up, the oxygen dilution becomes less, um, which helps in guaranteeing the FiO2. And initial settings, you know, uh, target sats 90 to 92%. And of course, weaning as well for um, SATs 90, 90 to 92%. Um, I already touched on most of this. We want to wean the FiO2 for SATs 90 to 92. And then we're looking at the flow rate to be able to wean um, with work of breathing. So as your work of breathing improves, we can wean that flow rate down. Now, if your work of breathing continues or it is increased, we definitely need to escalate care to non-invasive or intubation. And be aware of that 60 liters a minute and 100% FiO2 for a long period of time. Um, patient selection is important. Clearly, if you have no nose, then you can't benefit from heated high flow nasal cannula. Um, and then we all know that the standard of care for COPD exacerbation and pulmonary edema is non-invasive ventilation. Um, benefits, the high flow nasal cannula systems can be used from the neonatal um, population all the way to your geriatric population. 
the um, patient can eat, they can sleep, they can talk. Um, it's very comfortable. And guys, this is definitely not CPAP, rather low PAP, and it's definitely not PEEP. Um, there is a study that came out that showed that at 45 liters a minute, they only discovered about 2.5 centimeters of water of um, pressure. And so that's with the mouth closed as well. And as you know, a lot of our patients that are in respiratory distress don't breathe with their mouth closed. Um, it has been shown, however, to increase lung volumes on x-ray and increase functional residu residual capacity. And there is this kind of myth out there that for every centimeter of water, or for every 10 liters, you get centimeter, one centimeter of water of pressure, but that was actually done with two high flow systems at 100 liters per minute. And the patients were not patients, they were volunteers that weren't critically ill. Um, it does help with CO2 removal. It washes out the nasopharynx, it clears, um, uh, it clears, the, air, it clears the airway dead space, which will then decrease uh, minute volume and work of breathing, and it increases alveolar ventilation. Um, there is one predictor of success you could look at, the ROCKS index. So if you take my VV ECMO patient, when I initially put him on, I figured out the ROCKS index to be 3.14, which indicated that he might fail extubation. But then as um, I was able to wean him, I redid my calculations, and it went up to 6, which is an indicator that he would successfully remain extubated. And then we're looking at, for prediction, predictions of failure, we're looking at rate, respiratory rate pattern, um, how much oxygen we're on, how long we've been on it, and then of course, like I said, beware of your 60 and 100. And there is an app, it's really cool. I don't usually have, we use so many of these at Emory, I usually don't have one to train with, so I use the app on my phone, it's really cool. It act, just accurately, is, it works the way that um, the machine works, it's really neat. Um, so our takeaways today are, you know, it's our, it can be a first line use in um, acute respiratory, hypoxic respiratory failure. And then of course we need to use non-invasive with pulmonary edema and um, COPD exacerbation.